Okay, now I've, I've got this from somewhere. I can't remember where I got it from. You were you were obviously very aware of the way bookmakers work and the markets, and you were looking for inefficiencies in the markets. Is, is that correct? Yeah, I just think you're looking for off prices. Basically, you're looking for prices that are yeah incorrect that you can get bets down on prices that are bigger than the price you make it basically and uh, any markets that keep repeating stuff like that and keep staying efficient i think you get like a lot of bookies have kind of gone away from trader opinion and gone like pure quant and the math guys just take over in the background and they've all got their degrees from wherever but i think you can you can beat those guys pretty easily in certain spots and uh, if that's the way the bookies want to go without a proper trader's opinion Perfect. Like I'd rather be betting against them than, than working for them, basically. Now, given your inside sort of knowledge of the business, probably be easier than most people. Were they easy for you to find or was it a lot of work? I think it's a little bit of experience, isn't it? Like it's um yeah, like I can find bets getting on them as well as a as a another part of it, but like you can find bets all the time. The bets everywhere, like the amount of markets they've got and net selections on an individual bookies website must be tens of thousands every single day every minute of every day there's edges all over the place basically if you know them if you know how markets work and you can you can spot certain instances uh, in different sports and every sport's different but yeah there's there's plenty of inefficiencies basically in the market and, and some of them will keep repeating over and over basically so are you spotting that in the mathematics i mean you know or do you have to know everything about basketball to spot that there's a rick <laughs> Um, I think the mathematics is usually because there's that much stuff to look at the mathematics of looking at a market and it doesn't always apply because bookies tend to take more margin in markets they've got less confidence in for example but I used to just always look at markets where say like in the place part of a market I'll just admit if, I'm, if I've got an hour to look at horse racing I'm not going to look at the 40 races that are on today I'm going to filter them down into the races where there's just a basic each way edge basically um, straight away and I can filter it down to five races and I might as well focus on them if I've got all day to look at 40 races I can do it but like the maths might be my starting point into into what I look at for the day and do you find that they're as easy to exploit as they are to spot mm, yeah the exploiting the execution of getting the bets on is obviously is obviously a massive part of it in the UK where um, and quite a few territories in the world where they, they just can't, they don't want the lads that even break even. So yeah, getting bets on is most of it to be honest with you. I think, I think, I think finding the mistakes is pretty easy. I think anyone can do it really. I don't think there's nothing particular in what I do there. I might be able to do it better than some people, less well than some people. But I think I think the execution of getting bets on is a is a massive part of it, and that's where a bit of a team aspect comes in as well. Um, I think I'm pretty good at that. That's that's one thing I'm pretty good at getting down. So yeah. There's a a quote that I I read that you you said you did not want to be the smartest guy in the room. What do you mean by that? And this is in context with you like <laughs> to sort of you like to work with like minded people. Yeah, I think you just want to learn off people. Like it's one of the reasons I left Betfred. Probably one of the reasons I left Paddy Power. Just yeah, some places when you're working, you just think, sure, what, what am I going to learn here now? What is like when when it gets to the point where you're starting to teach people rather than learn off people, I'm kind of done. Um, sure, I don't want to be. I'm not. Wouldn't be the best teacher in the world. Um, wouldn't have the best patience in the world. Just in general. And uh, I just want to learn off people. I want to soak as much off, of, off, off smarter people than me, basically. And there's, there's plenty of those about. So, like, uh, I just tend to gravitate. Like, I've always liked talking to older people just in general in my life. Just, like, I'd rather talk to the, the guy who's 70 who's got a few war stories than, uh, than someone younger than me, basically. Because um, you learn off you learn off people who've got more experience than you in certain things. And that's kind of... Sure, that's kind of what I want to do. I want to. I want. I don't want to be the smartest. Smartest guy in the room is a book about Enron. I think the collapse of Enron in the in the United States is a great book. Um, but yeah, like I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. I want to. I want to learn off people basically. Okay, now obviously the the job that you've chosen, professional gambling, you, you can't probably can't get much more stressful. Um, now I was told that you were seconds away, literally, from winning half a million quid on one bet, and had the cut really snatched from your lips pretty much the last kick of the game and you took it extremely stoically i mean how 
Uh, is that even I correct? Know, I mean, I yeah, it's, it sounds right, but I don't know what instance of a bet it was. Um, I'm sure, there's been a few to be honest with you. Sure, you get good beats and bad beats all the time. I think, I think your psychology, like you, people remember the bad ones and people like to talk about the near misses, but a lot of people don't like to talk about when they got real lucky and the the, the near miss went against someone else, but it went for them and they put that down to skill rather than bad luck. Uh, it's all it's all part of the same thing for me. It's just the other side of the coin, basically. It's uh, you get bad beats all the time. I had a bad one this year where John Rahm was withdrawn from the memorial with COVID when he was six clear. That was a particular bad one, um, and it's just what it is. Like somebody else is back can't lay somewhere in that event, and he's never going to win, and he wins, and they think they're really smart. And I don't think I think it's just much of a muchness. I don't don't get real high when I win. Um, I wish I probably did get a bit higher when I won because it'd be more fun. But like, I don't really get, but then the flip side is I don't really get that down when I lose or something goes against me as well, which I think stands me in good stead. So uh, yeah, I just got to treat it, treat it all the same, basically. It sounds to me like that's your, just your natural personality is being quite a cool cucumber rather than a hothead. Is, is that, would that be fair to say? Well, if anyone's ever seen me play football, they probably disagree with that, to be honest. Yeah, I'm a bit of a... <laughs> I can get I'm, my rational parts come out on the football pitch, I'd say. But uh, like, yeah, just yeah, just be trying. I, I if I can control it, I like to be able to control it. And but then I think that stuff that's outside of my control, like John Rahm getting COVID for the third time, I'm not going to spend any time getting angry about it. Basically, because I actually can't control it. If if there's something I've missed, if John Rahm drops a COVID test on the floor and the cameras pan into it and he's failed a COVID test and I don't see that piece of footage, I might get angry, but there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm not going to spend any time wasted regretting and that, it, basically. And then the horse racing is something, obviously, that is, well, I assume it's quite a big part of your business. And um, without, without there being any sort of... Uh, any sort of proof, you've, you've apparently landed some, some sort of touches or orchestrated some touches on the horses and they tend to have been when everybody's looking somewhere else. Now I've got to say some of the people I've asked about you, they're very loyal. They're like, don't know anything about that. And then I've said, well, in this photograph, <laughs> is this not a photograph of you with the horse at left? Oh yeah, that one. So, you know, can, I, I don't expect you to tell us everything, but can you give us something about some of these touches that you've been behind? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Uh, what I'd say is, I don't really bet horses anymore, which is the first thing I'd say, just because we kind of probably, we kind of went for the, went for the stars and went for the sun and got the stars or whatever the moon and stars. Um, we had some good times with the horses. Uh, what would you say? What would you say about the horses? Yeah, I was just looking after a few bits and pieces. We're getting bets on, um, how would I put it with the horses? Like we were, we did well. We, we were actually really lucky with the horses, I think, because, I think I we noticed or I noticed that you could get big multiples on on horse racing, um, and we kind of put in a plan to like maximise that, and that went really well. Some some downsides to it, but it went well overall, and we won a lot of money. I think very quickly, within eighteen months, the avenues had begun to shut down, but we were really lucky that kind of we just stopped having winners after that, so we were struggling to get on. But it actually coincided where if we could have got on, we probably would have lost it all back. Basically, the kind of uh, our kind of edge had disappeared, um, but we weren't able to lose the money back because everyone was terrified of the bets. So I don't even know if what we were doing was that smart. To be honest with you, overall, probably wasn't, and we probably just got a bit lucky, um, just with placing horses. And yeah, I think like when you're saying people looking at big meetings, I had a horse called Ratil with a mate of mine that won at Dundalk when Cheltenham was on. That was the first one that I did on my own, where I basically wanted to have a good bet on him one day at Dundalk on the Friday at Cheltenham and did that. And he won. He still went off. Like he actually went, his bet for SP was about the same price that I took on him, to be honest with you. So like the market wasn't really respecting us at that stage, but we got a good few quid out of him. Um, yeah. And yeah, I suppose like the market caught up to us, but it, coincided with us losing money and uh, we, we got lucky that we were able to get out and stay ahead basically I think in the end. If you used the plural there a few times so how, how big a team was we? 
we there was a couple of us. I wouldn't say the other lads' names for sure, but um, I probably wasn't even the biggest guy in it, to be honest with you. But I think, uh, what would you say? Like, uh, yeah, there's we. I was in, I was looking after a lot of it. All the people were getting bets on, and I didn't have any part of that because I just don't actually enjoy the placing of the bet side of it. I like digging into it and. I like the plot inside of it a lot more than uh, the actual execution. I hate going in betting shops, betting shops. So just, I just hate being around them. Basically, it just does nothing for me. And so I just like to send other people in, basically, in the main. Um, and that's kind of what we did with the horses. We were doing a bit online originally. Kind of got less online, a bit more in shops, and like everything, the the the, the edge went out of it. I think in the end, and uh, we kind of we kind of disbanded and all went on to other things. So yeah. Okay, now I've I listened to a podcast that you took part in um, and you said that you um, have had or have, I don't know which is which now, a network of people that help you get on. Is that still the case? <coughs> yeah, like um, I can't get bets on in my own name. I have I have a good relationship with BetDAC and a good relationship with Matchbook. Bad relationship with Betfair, you'd probably say, just with the responsible gambling stuff. Like... We won't even go into what's going on with it at bet for exchange um bookmakers tend to not i'd love to work with bookmakers i'd love to say you give me a bet to win this and i'll actually just correct the bad prices on your website and for, for a nominal amount but if i can if but then i just use other people to get on with them anyone who closes me down i, I bet with every bookie on odds checker and i bet with other ones that aren't on odds checker in the uk as well and um, and none of them are in my own name so that's just that's just the way it is uh, and your your network spreads further afield than that. Yeah, I just got contacts in different countries: Canada, Australia, America, Italy, Georgia. Bit few different pieces, basically, and just just yeah, just trying to get money on, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, the bit about that: how difficult is it to cultivate a network of people that you can really really rely on and trust? Yeah. Especially when your difficult. network's getting bigger. Yeah, there's a lot of management of it, to be honest with you. Like, it's uh, just have good relationships with people. I think when you're saying, when people use the ruthless comment, I suppose the advantage of being ruthless is you end up with a small little team of people that you feel, they feel like you can trust quite a lot and uh, you can send them stuff and it's not going to get sent anywhere else. I'd imagine that the bookies that know that I'm betting with them, I, I'd imagine that they, at the moment they don't really know where it's coming from because it's quite well concealed. Um, and that's the way I want it, really. I, I don't want to... I, I think everyone at one stage goes through at the start of the career, you'd be saying, oh, I won this bet, and talking aloud and stuff like that, and I find that got ended up getting me nowhere. Um, you, 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 you wind people up more than uh, get them on side, so I just keep my mouth shut and just try and get it quietly, basically, just in general. 